Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. The way we do that, as you probably know if you've been with us before, is by spending time together every morning in the Word of God and in prayer. And so my hope for you, my, my plan, is that every day you and I would read one chapter of Scripture together as a way of keeping ourselves immersed in the Word of God every day. And so we uh, work kind of book by book through the Bible, and right now we are in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, so 1 Corinthians. And so today we come to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And so my invitation to you would be that when we're all done the lesson, you would take a moment and you would read the whole of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just a portion of that. We'll be looking at verses 14 through 22. So... I would invite you to grab your Bible or pull it up on your phone or whatever works well for you and join me in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning in verse 14. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to sensible people. Judge for yourself what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? It is not the bread that we break, a participation in the body of Christ. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share one loaf. Consider the people of Israel. Do not those who eat the sacrifice participate at the altar? Do I mean that food sacrificed to an idol is anything, or that an idol is anything? No. But... The sacrifice of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participating with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to arouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than he well, when you read the whole chapter, you're going to see that in the first part of the chapter, Paul recounts how the Israelites had often, in their history, chased after idols and pagan gods, and they worshipped many of the Canaanite gods, Baal and Asherah and others that were common to the, the, the foreigners in their area, and... They often got caught up in this. And so he first reminds us of all the things that happened to the Israelites when they became uh, caught up in pagan worship and idolatry and pulled away from God. Then he brings it into a first century context, into his own time, right? Uh, reminding them in verse 14 that we just read, to flee from idolatry. Apparently, what he is seeing in the church in Corinth is that some of the people are trying to live in both worlds. They want to be Christ followers, but at the same time, they are participating in a pagan life. They are engaged in practices, rituals, sacrifices, uh, things connected in other ways to idols and to pagan living. Now, he doesn't tell us specifically what that looks like, but he is describing something that is still a struggle to this day. Often, as Christ followers, we too struggle with having one foot in the kingdom of God and the other foot in the world. We want to be all in for Christ. We want to live lives that fully reflect the love of God. We want our lives to be poured out in the pursuit of the gospel and the work of Christ. But sometimes we get drawn into, caught up in materialism, in worldly temptations, in pettiness, in power struggles, and other things that do not reflect the way of Christ, but the ways of the world. 
We cannot live in both worlds. As Jesus said in another passage, we can't serve two masters. To use Paul's words, he says we cannot drink from the cup of Christ and from the cup of demons. He's saying we can't have it both ways. We can't live in both worlds. We can't chase after both purposes. So what do we do? How do we combat that struggle, that sometimes temptation in our life to be drawn into both worlds? Personally, I think it starts with the little things. When you wake up in the morning, do we get right up so we have time for prayer or scripture or even to listen to a first five before we get caught up in the busyness of the day and get off to work and all that? Or do we just hit the snooze button and enjoy a little extra sleep? When we have to choose a movie to watch, do we tune into HBO Max or Pure Flex? When someone brings us gossip, do we soak it in or do we walk away? When we think about our resources, are we generous givers or do we hold on to our money so we can have more stuff? I believe the battle for what world we will live in, the living in a worldly way or in a Christ-like way, begins in the small stuff. The little choices that we make every day to, to pursue the things of Christ to act in a godly way, to immerse ourselves in things that reflect the love of Christ. And so, my encouragement is to start with the small things and pursue those things of God that help us to live firmly in the life of Christ. Would you join me in prayer? Oh Lord, what, what Paul describes here is a church where many of the people were sort of trying to straddle the line. They were trying to live in both worlds. They wanted to be Christ-like and be a part of the church, but at the same time, they were worldly and chased after the things of the world. And, and so, God, we do that sometimes. We are sometimes also torn in that way between wanting to have worldly possessions and power and, and all the things that go along with that versus wanting to live a life that truly reflects Christ and that is all about serving Him. Lord, help us to not live split down the middle. Help us to not live trying to straddle both worlds. Help us to firmly plant our feet on your side of the fence. Help us to stay focused on Christ and pursuing the things of Christ with all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.